Okay, for this video we're going to talk about the central limit theorem. And with a name like that, you know it's got to be important. And so the central limit theorem is many of the bases of all statistics. And so in order to do so, I'm going to go to this thing called a sampling distribution. And if you remember back to when we had stretch days and we were doing those lawyer's cases, and you were taking groups of three ages, finding their average to see the likelihood that the person's age was, uh, that the typical age was higher, or sorry, lower than the uh, age discriminatory age of the, of the client. Well, this is a similar idea. What I have here is I have a normal curve, a mean of 16, a median of uh, 16, and the standard deviation is five. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pick five of these squares at random, find the average and plot it. And I'm also going to do then like 25 of them and then find the average and plot it. So we watch and see. I'm picking five different ones. And that was the average. This here represents five different scores. Whereas the ones going out now, they're counting 25. It's going to catch an average and plot it. We do it again, and the same thing will happen. Five, we get the average. As it's going, you notice that the median is 15.5, or this is true for that. The original 16. Okay, and so let's do uh, it again, but we'll do five. So this is done five repetitions. Each of these squares represents five squares of the black normal distribution. And so I want you to notice the mean and the standard deviation. The mean and the standard deviation. I'll do five more and just notice what happens. Okay? Then I'm going to go, I'm just going to go right to, and let's do 10, 100,000 of them. And I want you to notice, what do you notice about the mean of each of these sampling distributions and the original? You should notice that they're the same. Also, the standard deviation. This group when n is 25 is much tighter together, less spread out than this group. This is more spread out. And so the larger the sample size of n, the smaller the standard deviation. It started off as 5 and now it is 1. That leads me to think it's 5 divided by Five, but this is 25, so the square root might be this. Okay, so that's when I have. Um, I also want to make note of the shape. The shapes are the same. Um, so I have a normal curve. And I have a normal curve, and this one's very normal. Now let's try it similarly. I'll do it quick, but I'm going to make a different kind of. If I make it uniform, take a moment. Think. What do you think the distributions are going to look like? So when I do it, I'm just going to do. I'll do the same scenario. So it's going to grab 5 from the uniform, and it's also going to go 25. <coughs> it's catching all the values, different values. Think about what do you think the means are going to be? If I do 5 more, and 5 more, and 5 more, and if I do jump all the way to the end, what's interesting to me is the means are still 16. The standard deviation is, well, this standard deviation is 9, and now I have the, both, this is smaller than this one, but the shape is normal. So not a normal curve produces a normal sample distribution. Let me make a different one even. Let me customize it. Let me make it anti-normal. Okay? Okay, so that's probably as unnormal as I can get it. And let's just go and do it. I'm going to go right to 100,000. 100,000 more. 100,000 more. What's interesting to me is this one of 25 becomes a normal distribution again. This one of 5, it's kind of normal, there's just not enough in it. So but here's the key that's really important. The mean is 12.4, 12.4, 12.4. So even a non-normal distribution produces, if n is large enough, a normal curve. With the mean being the same and the standard deviation, well, there's a calculation to get the standard deviation. And that is, in essence, 
the central limit theorem. If you take a population and, you, and if your sample size, like n, is large enough, it will produce a normal curve where the mean of the normal curve sampling distribution is the same as the mean of the original population and the standard deviation is divided by the root of n, which I'll show you in just a second. Um, take a moment, you can play with this yourself, but that's the theory behind the central limit theorem, and it's a pretty cool thing. And here's what the, here's what, oh, the central limit theorem says this. For any distribution, and that is so important that we have any distribution at all. For any distribution, if this, if the expected value is mu, the variance is sigma squared, and if n is bigger than or equal to 30, so if n is large enough, then the distribution and the sum and the mean are given by such. It means we end up with a normal curve, the average is the same as the expected value, and the variance is equal to the variance of the population divided by n. That means the standard deviation divided by square root of n is this, the standard deviation of this normal curve. The sum is the same. It's n times the expected value, and the variance will be n times all these variances. So critical. We use this all the time. Any distribution, no matter normal or non-normal, will become a normal distribution if n is large enough. And it's super powerful.